Addis Ababa, capital of Ethiopia, Africa. I've come here to seek some insight to the Rastafarian faith and the man who inspired it. He'd be a hundred today, the Emperor Haile Selassie I. Rastafari was his aristocratic name before he was crowned King of Kings. He ruled this country for half of the 20th century and tried to bring it into the modern world. In the end he was overthrown, but not before he'd become a symbol of all Africa and far away some saw him as a living god. There's so many uh, Rastafarians going to Ethiopia this year for the celebration of Haile Selassie that I just had to, you know, find my way there, you know. And uh, it was really beautiful, you know. All my ideas of Ethiopia, uh, for a long time, that I've read about Ethiopia in the Bible, you know. It was well fulfilled for me. The emperor disappeared in August 1975. Yeah. A year before, he had been arrested and removed from the palace by army conspirators, led by a colonel called Mengistu Haile Mariam. For 17 years, Mengistu and his military council called the Derg ruled Ethiopia. When this brutal regime collapsed in 1991, a new democratic government allowed a search for some trace of the emperor. This one on the day of birthday of his majesty, it is very crucial. I went in a little while, a couple of months ago, doing a painting a building, a villa. And I saw it on the television one night where they take up digging up bones and put in the public and show to the world that it is modest bones. And from that time, I rejected from the very first day that they announced in bed, I rejected until I see the take up bone, I still reject it until now. No, they promised they promised to um to bury the bone. No, they put it off. No bone burying. For it, it will be a, a confusion between a celebration of a living king, it means of a dead bone. We do have appearance, see when it sees alive in flesh, he's not dead. Sorry, I forget. <laughs> he's not dead. <laughs> we have the courage, you see. The notion that the emperor is still alive would surprise most Ethiopians. After all, they saw every trace of him removed by the Derg. I asked Shemelis Desai, who's a guide in the National Museum. This round was in the palace. Uh, this palace, I mean, this, this round was uh, uh, using for, uh, you know, the court decision for Haile Selassie. It was very short, and there were steps to, to become on tops. So now, uh, when Haile Selassie alive, and he gave us a museum as a gift. And the museum still, they keep it as it is. But the main this two, uh, they were the Haile Selassie's photographs. I mean, the, the statue of the Haile Selassie there. And they took it somewhere, so I don't know where it is. That's holes. And uh, well, there is uh, some written which is written in Greece. If it's translated to in English, it's a land of Judah. The uh, Atoshimelis, the Rastafarians, have they been to see this? Uh... Yeah, yeah, so many Rastafarians, they saw it uh, many times. And uh, when they see these rounds, 
Uh, they give, uh, uh, you know, they give as the gods say, you know, how do you get it that uh, in, uh, in Amharic, you know, they give as, uh, uh, like as a god, you know. What do you make of all that? Well, uh, you know, Rastafarians, always they trust, the Haile Selassie still, he never dies, he's alive, he says. What do you think? Well, uh, that is, it, it, it could, could, could be for them, but uh, we, we know that he is, he dies already, 1974, by the Turks. So, the rest of them still, he said that he's, they are alive, at least that he's alive. If they said, if we said to them, if, you know, they couldn't trust us, they would like to quarrel with us. So, Ayla Siddhasi still is a priest now. His Imperial Majesty would recognize Addis Ababa. Churchill Avenue still looks grand, though the city in general has decayed. But an affectionate public demonstration, that would surprise him. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! In the Emperor's day, the police would have broken this up. But most of these marches are too young to remember his autocratic rule or the student revolts which helped to end it. For them, the emperor is a symbol of national unity. They support a small political party which wants to bring back the royal exiles from America and to create a constitutional monarchy. Though some look like Rastas, their devotion to the emperor is political, not religious. The Rastafarians uh, concept of the imperial majesty is quite uh, different from our uh, people. Well, the, see the majesty from, uh, I think, from the, from the belief point of view. For our people, it's difficult to, to, to take it in this way. As a Rastafarian, we accept certain concepts. And the first and initial and principal concept is that Haile Selassie is the fulfillment of an ancient prophecy that Christ would return to earth. That's what we accept and that's what we know and that's what we defend. Whether it's spiritual or purely human being. For a different reason, these days we don't uh, take any position, particularly we don't want to offend them. To see where the monarchist's devotion and the Rasta faith came from, we have to look back nearly 60 years to a time when the emperor first became a symbol of his country and of all Africa. Only a veteran can now remember when the last and most brutal chapter of the European scramble for Africa began. 1935, Italy claimed Ethiopia and Mussolini's troops invaded. At the League of Nations in Geneva, the Emperor went to plead Ethiopia's just cause. The League, fearful of a shadow which would turn into the Second World War, did nothing. Shamefully, the great powers left Ethiopia to Mussolini and the Emperor to lonely exile in England. His Nowhere, I think, was the Emperor's tragedy felt more deeply than among the black people of the West, 
the slave descendants in North America and the Caribbean. Black consciousness had dawned in Jazz Age Harlem, and Africa fermented in the exile's hearts. Many supported a black activist called Marcus Garvey, and when he demanded Africa for the Africans and repatriation to the homeland, they saw Ethiopia as a special symbol of the whole continent. Until now, it alone had not been seized by white Europeans. Such people volunteered to fight for Haile Selassie, although only a handful managed to go, or they organized to send relief. Black Americans rallied towards the cause, and black Jamaicans likewise. And so the organization was formed in New York, 150th to 100th Avenue, New York, and as uh, Ethiopian War Federation Corporation. Those people gave up money, medicine, clothes, and what have you sent into Hellasalaga. A branch of the Ethiopian World Federation soon opened in Jamaica, where Garvey came from. But in this neglected corner of the British Empire, black frustration had a new twist. A few ex-followers of Garvey had begun to mix Haile Selassie, symbol of Africa, with biblical notions of a messiah. By abbreviating Jehovah, or Yahweh, to Jah, and adding this to the emperor's earlier name, Rastafari, they created the invocation, Jah Rastafari a black messiah for their redemption. It would be years before any followers of the Rastafarian faith reached Ethiopia. The emperor knew nothing about them, as he himself returned, with British military help, to reclaim his throne. Look what Mussolini is trying to do. Take a bigger mouthful than any man can do. The drums are beating and the bugle call. But we cannot let the lion of Judah fall. So let us take a turn in our hand and defend the Ethiopian war. Declare. I remember when the first batch of black Americans, Jamaicans, and these people came to Ethiopia. People like Colonel Robinson, who was a pilot, who fought on the side of Ethiopia. And others like Talbot, Piper, and many others came. These were educated people. And they had contributed and they were, took pain in our cause, in our sake. And Imperial Haile Selassie was one of them who sold them favorably. And in fact, he went as far as giving them a piece of land to settle upon money to start their, uh, to, to give them a chance to start with a good foundation. So the first batch, for some unknown reason, left. The second batch and the batch that came afterwards they were not the type of expected people. By that I mean, not as human beings, they are all welcome, even today they are welcome. But they didn't bring education, technical know-how, nor uh, enough money to start uh, a form of living for, their, uh, for themselves. Almost all the people who came afterwards were Rastafarians. The Jamaican, who is now the longest remaining settler in Ethiopia, who spent half his life here, is Noel Dyer. When I was 23, life was tough. I got my trade before. When I was 15, I started trading. I'm 65 now. I started trading when I was 15. I went about, after the war, 42, 45, war over. Things get stiff. No work couldn't go on. Thing was very tight. So I leave, I leave the country, take in Kingston and start the ball for Jamaica really. So 1959, the Rastaman, uh, what you call, um, they rise up, we, they, they rise up in Jamaica, they rise up, just rise up. At first, the Rastafarians frightened the government, the police, and most Jamaicans, 
and it is true that a handful preached rebellion. But it began to dawn on the authorities that Rasta was not political, it was a religious movement. So I went out there that Sunday evening and heard him and the, to, get, to get to the meeting. And I was in the middle of the street and my girlfriend was in my home. Her name is Gwendolyn. And Martin Maplana, he come down the Rasta and start to, to speak. And it's, the first thing he say was Psalms 2. I do the Eden range and the people cut in vain and the king of the earth set themselves together. The ruler take course again on the night and saying, let us break the bands asunder. Cause it here from us. I'm gone, I'm gone. Then he stopped and you're going to history now. And he talk about the history of the slave in Jamaica at a sugar factory where the white man be like to play thing called Yalas. And that factory was tested by black men before the grand king. So I looked at him and I said to my girlfriend, he looked like Moses. He said, who's Moses? He said, you ever seen the Ten Commandments? He said, yes. He said, Martin Mopana. I said, yes, I know, but he looked like Moses. So from, uh, from that time, I, I, a different spirit, you know, just enter me through that man. Inter intermedi. Right away, I was converted. The faith in England is, 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 um, came to us through Jamaica. Um, elders have traveled from Jamaica in, in the 60s and some in the late 50s and um, established the Rastafari movement in England, plus the reading of books, the traveling to Jamaica to the different camps and to, to reason with the different elders, music, reggae music, and um, Nyabingu music on, on record had great effect. And the experiences that we um, went through growing up in England in schools like prejudice and things helped to make us draw towards our blackness and look to Africa for our future. But what happened to us in Jamaica? We have a saying there, you take us out of Africa, you can't take Africa out of us. It is in bed. Then the ancient African, our culture in Jamaica, they play a thing they call kumina. Use the same type of drum like the um, the yeah, uh, bingy drums. So it, it never left us, you see. It is there. And when I was a boy, I used to sing about Africa. Take me back home to Africa. I want to go home. Shanties are a very humble uh, uh, set of people from Jamaica, and uh, in a way, they to me, they, I mean, they've got different ideas from most uh, groups of Rastafarians. Only that um, one thing in common, you know, that Haile Selassie is the Almighty, you know. But apart from that, they the most Rastafarian groups. They're a bit eccentric, still, you know. At this moment, we are members of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, Church of Salvation, based in Jamaica, Ten Miles Bull Bay. Under the leadership of our President, God and King, the Most Right Honorable, 
King Emmanuel Charles Edward, Crown Champion of Human Rights and Human Justice, President Founder of this Congress, and who is also the only authorized ambassador for repatriation and reparation network for His Majesty Emperor Selassie. Our movements here at this moment is to come and have discussion on the whole idea of repatriation, the whole movements of repatriation with the transitional government and to agitate for our ships. The fundamental demands is seven, nine or 13 miles of high water ships from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, the President of the Transitional Government of Ethiopia, the President of Ghana, the President of Nigeria, and many other states, all governments of the world, and all who have benefited from the slave trade to conjoin and support our President in Jamaica with ships for us, the slave subject to return from the diaspora back to our homeland, Ethiopia. Lovely Africa, lovely Africa, peace and butter, I want to have a good talk with the emperor, I want to go to lovely Africa, mama, lovely Africa. On the very first day we went to Jamaica, the slave, we want to come back the same day. You, you, you couldn't get Africa out of us. When the opportunity, when, when the time come for one to leave, to come back, to Africa. He just have to just left. His mother, everything. But he's not he's not himself make up his mind, you know. He's the man that's speaking through him. The prophecy that's written of him. But when when you when you check back in the Bible, I think it's in Isaiah thirty three or forty three something about that it's a give my son from far. It's a fret not or Jacob. Say again? Fret not or Jacob, my servant, whom I'm choosing. I bring your son from far, and my daughter from the end of the earth. The one that is called by my name, Rastafari, the last So that 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 bond in us, that bond in I and I. You, 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 you know, thing you make up to do a thing. You were called. You see, you remember Jonah. He was sent to Nineveh, and he refused. He never wanted to go. You were talking in the in the in the belly of the whale. Well, I couldn't. Be, I couldn't. I am. I am Jonah. Nothing did the, the fish. Went into a ship by the name of Bogona. A Spanish ship. I I, go, I was down at the deck. I find myself down there going to England. I leave Jamaica. No other purpose but to reach Ethiopia. I want to go to lovely Africa, mama, lovely Africa, please send for Terra, I want to have a good talk with the emperor, mama. Unlike most Jamaicans coming to England for work, Noel brought with him the Rastafarian custom of smoking marijuana or herb. To a Rasta, this is more than a forbidden drug or a harmless pleasure. Well, that is the root, you know, that, that, that is the incense, you know, that is it. Is that is the root. That is, is that open your opinion. Is that, it, it gives you that connection close to God. When you have that, you take a clean land and you pray in heart to serve God. And from here, clean and God have a purpose. And you're moving clean, He reveals Himself to you. Says so that what happened. There is nowhere in the world in any religion that says use addicting materials to enhance religious beliefs. Well, firstly, right, there's no rule in the movement that you have to smoke um, marijuana. Um, marijuana, right, is an African heritage. That means it's something that's in African history before the Europeans came here. In principle, I am against their using. But because they are aliens, because this is something that could be improved through education, we close one of our eyes. 
Ethiopia may tolerate the Rasta's smoking habits, but during the time of Noel's journey, England was not so kind. 61 when I reached England, December, I was sent to prison innocently in Bristol. For herds, I was plant by a policeman. I was sent to prison innocently. In 1963, we met 62. No, 63 we met. I left Bristol and met them in London. At Camberwell, Peckham, over Peckham. I met them there one night at, at a blues dance. No, at a labor exchange, I met them, one of them. And he took me to his house and, you know, we have to smoke our weeds, you understand? We are racist, so they take me to make, get some smoke, you know, for they never met before. When we met together, we all meet now and make, we live as one family and it was brotherhood. I break a buckle head, you know, buckle. I make a jaw, stuff it in it like a pipe and burn it like a pipe. And a thing hit me, he said, T tomorrow morning, leave London. And I walked down the street, I go to pick on my street. I took a bus, 30, I think it's 37, to um, Victoria. When I went there, which you really see, you say, go to Dover, right? I can't read, I can't write. I started really saying, very busy, you know what, you know what Victoria is? And I look around, and, oh, I, I have to get through, man. I asked him, you must have to go through this thing. Yeah. And I listen, and I listen, and I watch the movement. I get the ticket to Dover, and I don't know which train. But I leave England, I leave London with five pounds, five shillings, and five pence, eight penny, all in fives. How long did it take you to journey through Europe and Africa to Zion. <laughs> well, here. I leave September 64. I leave Addis Ababa 64, 60, uh, 1965, September. One year. You know the cross, when you begin, England, it starts from the end. Each hike. All of it is each hike. France. Spain, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, <laughs> Egypt, Sudan, <laughs> Zion. <laughs> His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. With Ethiopia, this man was born there. And of Zion, it shall be said that this and that man was born in her. And the ice himself shall establish her. Well, sometimes uh, I'd lay down in my villa and, you know, uh, refresh my mind of the Psalms that I've read in the Bible. and. You know, it's just a picture of the Bible itself, you know, when Christ was around, you know, there was hundreds of people with leprosy and people suffering and starving all around, you know. And when I look, you know, it was like almost, it's a picture, a total picture of the Bible 2,000 years ago. Yeah, I hear the Bible all the while. I get, you have to have a Bible in school. In Jamaica, when you read third grade, you have to have a Bible. Otherwise, the parents and the teacher is in trouble. You have to have a Bible. But the Bible was used in Jamaica to keep us quiet, you see. So you have to have a Bible. Was it the King James Version, English King Bible? King James Version, yes. Yeah, yeah. I love that man. He did a good work for I. I love that English man, truly. <laughs> Religion, for us, or the Bible, took a hold, or we became more um, conscious of it, or more readily to accept it. In when we came to accept the Rastafari movement, or it was the Rasta movement that made many young black people pay to their Bibles. When I came back to England, you know, I started to actually read the Bible with the Ethiopian perspective and looking at it through that eyes, you know, and, and it was plain to see, you know, very plain to see, you know. Haile Selassie, uh, the 
divine king, you know, Christ in his kingly character. Ah, lovely Africa, lovely Africa, please send water up. I want to have a good talk with the emperor. I want to go to lovely Africa, mama, lovely Africa, please send water up. I want to have a good talk with the emperor. I dreamt him last night, go to see him is my delight. Why would he last man to be in Africa and finish with Great Britain? I want to go to Lovely Africa, Mama, Lovely Africa. Please send for Terra, I want to have a good talk with the Emperor, Mama. Met his majesty in the Jubilee Palace after all this time. One afternoon, he said to us, be at home in the Jubilee Palace. Make yourself at home like when you was in Jamaica. Everything will be all right. That was it. Both women went out back. So I left him that afternoon. The next morning, I took my things. Take the job in Cheshire, man. I come to Cheshire, man, in that job in the area territory with a letter and my documents. Even with a job, Noel found a hard life of poverty in his promised land. The 500 acres of Cheshire, man, is the emperor's gift to the black people of the West who helped Ethiopia in her time of distress. There are about 50 settlers here today, and all are Rastas except one, an American Baptist preacher, the Reverend Hillman. I was employed. I did a little mechanic work back in the States before I left. So from there they hired me as a heavy duty mechanic. The Empire Highway Authority. And I worked for them for 15 years until uh, this, uh, you know, the trend changed here. Uh, this uh, socials came in again, whatever. They cited me as a uh, a rabbi, I don't know, but anyway, see, he'd say, you're American, you don't work in the uh, employee any longer, so they put me out of work. Well, I've been out of work over eight years now. Uh, honey, how long I've been out of work? Uh, is that 10 uh, Nine years, no work at all. And so I survived according to the power of the Almighty God. The Reverend Hillman has no congregation. Sheshamani's links are with Jamaica, and the Emperor unwittingly encouraged this by his celebrated visit in 1966. Until this moment, no one had realized that there were about 10,000 Rastas, least of all the Emperor. During the tour, His Majesty is reputed to have said, Who am I to deny their faith? In the years that followed, the Emperor went forth from his palace to many foreign lands. He was a tireless diplomat on his country's behalf. But things were not all right at home. The Lion of Judah had encouraged education, and that's a dangerous commodity in a backward feudal society. Impatience began to show. The university students protested. Conspiracies started in the army. Then in 19... Emmerman for eight years, and now I've been asked to appear in front of the camera, and I am shooting this very film too. Well, I have uh, I have spent uh, days and 
and weeks on end at this uh, at this jubilee place this was the hall where emperor entertained his visitors which included general de gaulle the shah of iran and many other people and there used to be banquets here late in the evening champagne flowing ethiopian honey wine and everything else i felt as the head of state he he has to take a blame for what happened in ethiopia he unfortunately was on the very well advised and that's why he was uh, absolutely out of touch with his own people and the you know, realities in ethiopia uh the rastafarians believe that he is uh, he is not yet dead and he thus you know risen up I mean I believe he was uh, he was uh, definitely you know, murdered and uh, uh, I don't uh, believe that he is uh, alive and he is in you know, rhythm the in fact uh, you know yesterday we saw his his coffin with his uh, his uh, his uh, bones and all the indications are that he was uh, you know murdered and unfortunately that's the end of emperor Haile Selassie I think these you know Rasta people are dreaming the coffin of Emperor Haile Selassie. Can you show? Yes, you can. Look. Can you show me the coffin of Haile Selassie? I swear I believe in Haile Selassie. Uh, it's not right that we believe your uh, uh, your uh, the Rasta Faria. I just love him, man. And uh, uh, great of Africa, uh, from Africa, but it's not God. I just love him. I just love him, man. And uh, no, that's mistake. The belief of uh, uh, Rastafarian men. Yeah, Rastafari. <laughs> You know, we were hearing a lot about this, the so-called Rastafarians. Now we are too much happy to see their, uh, what they are going to show us today. While the Rastas celebrated His Majesty before an intrigued audience of Ethiopians, other sadder things went on at the Addis prison. After the Emperor's removal, 60 of his high officials were executed here. Relatives have come, even from America, to mourn their lost families.
Governor Haile Selassie's burial uh, was scheduled for July 16th. It has now been postponed, uh, but it will take place uh, soon. And it's very, very important commemoration for all of us who lived in his time and even for the future. Uh, the funeral was um, rejected by the government. They, they announced when the Rastafarians arrived that the bones of Haile Selassie uh, that they claimed that they found was the bones are too long for a man of five foot four, you know, so they forget about the burial, you know. Apparently, His Majesty is just not, you know, in Ethiopia, you know, or no debt business, you know. <laughs> The Rastas on board the buses spent a week in Shashamani celebrating His Majesty's birthday with drumming and chanting, what they call a bingi. About 300 had come from London, Birmingham, Jamaica and the USA, but they didn't wish to be filmed. In the end, a small group gave us an audience. I am Brother Moody, Chairman of the Ethiopian World Federation in Seshamani. First, let me say that Rastafari movement begins on a peace and love philosophy. And it is basically this, that we have been to school. We learned our African slave history. And we accept the teachings of the Holy Bible. And this moral and spiritual awareness, I and I decided to take up the challenge to travel to Africa and to develop land graciously given to I and I by our garden king, Ailey Selassie I. We want to create business, both for the circulars here, that means the circulars will come, from that time, we bring up their living standard. The people around the general area, the business that we create, like black making machine. Well, on the black making, I have to really give thanks to all the people who bought a raffle ticket from us. You understand? Because the black making machine is here now, and um, we'll be shortly making bricks, supplying to the community. We already have people from Addis who say they need blacks. So, that is what we really want to do, create employment for the people around. Now, Psalm 68, verse 4. Sing unto God, sing praises unto his name. Extol him that ride upon the heavens by his name, Jah. Every Ethiopian meet now will ask you for a picture of his majesty. And it seems that you can, you, by your works, you'll be able to make him know that you're not just a man with locks upon your head. You're also a doctor, philosopher, teacher, you know, an educational farmer. We and I everything in Croatia. Verse 11. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. For the past two years, right, we have a development program that was presented to the past regime and accepted also by this regime. Um, that um, involves three stages, which is first a headquarters to be established on Shashamani land grant, and the second stage was to initiate small scale industries, cottage industries, and the third stage would involve housing scheme and residents. Um, the first stage has been accomplished 
in that we finished our headquarters. Um, well, we nearly finished our headquarters. Now, verse 9. Uh, so there is a light, there, there is a hope uh, that these the so-called educated Rastafarians would assist them in the future. And me, I as a private person, and an Ethiopian who has been exiled, was lived away for 26 years out of this country. I only wish that they would get the same chance that I got while I was in Sweden, even in Ethiopia. In other words, I hope they would get a chance to improve themselves and integrate themselves into the society of Ethiopia without giving way to their beliefs. Brother Moody. Don't cut me yet, John. Verse 32. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch her hand to God. Yeah, I would like uh, to tell you, Mr. John, about the Rastafarians, they wrote some comments. And uh, Brixton from London, he said, disappointed that Highland Selassie is not represented in any form. Uh, Aken from London, the another person, fire burn his comments. Uh, Callum, Callum from London, uh, the very disappointed, not enough show on his majesty. This is the comment from them. Now I'm going to tell you a mystery, John. Do you want to cut you here? <laughs> Mystery? Well, perhaps the mystery is that idea of a true home, which calls the children of Africa back to her. Many are calling, no? Many are called, but few are choosing. Many are called, but few are choosing. I was called, and I was choosing. It's funny, but it's true. It is good that you are here to record this picture of me in my palace garden at Addis Ababa. People who see this throughout the world will realize that even in the 20th century, with faith, courage, and a just cause, David will still beat Goliath. <laughs> Gun in our hand and it